Good morning, tubers. Welcome back for another adventure. A buddy of mine dropped this off yesterday. It is from a Yamaha G9 golf cart that um, that he's had for a while. I guess it's from the early 90s. And you can kind of see what the problem is. They have, this is on the intake manifold side. This is made out of a plastic and you can see how it bolts on and uh, he I think there was a problem with the carburetor he went to take it off to rebuild it this bolt was tight and he you know he was rocking it back and forth then somebody decided to help him and walked up to it and went all Hulk Hogan and snapped it right on off a lot of times with these type of things, if you kind of start out <laughs> by spraying the heck out of it and go away, and then come back and, you know, kind of turn it a sixteenth of a turn in each direction just until you feel some resistance, spray it again and go away and, you know, keep doing that for a week or so. Sometimes you could get them to spin out. In this case, it did not spin out. It broke off. And then you could see that there's there's other problems here now looking at this I, I wouldn't have got into this problem once it snapped off I would have just cut it flat and then quite honestly center tapped it right uses a center punch and drill right through and then I would have followed up and and put a nut on the back right you have this cylinder bolt here, so I assume there's nothing on it that would prevent you from putting a, a nut here to bolt that intake manifold. But anyway, that's not what's happened. And then to make things even a little more interesting, this extra material is uh, JB Weld. So anyhow, we got to fix this up. So if you're working on something like this, right you really want to get it as stable as possible notice you got those two exhaust bolts sticking out there and what i did is i um drilled the hole holds in that two by four and you can see now the thing is a lot more stable right uh, the second thing you want to do the surface that's not taped you you don't want to mess up right i want to get this ground flat and i really don't want to mess up any of any of this surface here so i'm um as a matter of fact i'm i might as i bring this down i might put a, a little a little more tape on it if you ruin this ceiling surface right the uh the head is shot first thing i did i started out with this sears shaft drive dremel and this is a carbide bit and I kind of worked at making a spot on the bolt that I can work on you can see how it's kind of dug in there right and once I did that I um, took out just a small bit right and kind of drilled on it a little bit and gradually as I was able to see where things were and were not then I went to the uh, carbide drill bits and um, to do the, the one that this guy right and kind of worked on it and gradually I got rid of enough material where I was able to kind of tap it out, right? I was able to use a fine punch to get it out of there. Obviously, I got one tapped um, hole left. This one <laughs> is drilled out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a gasket for this. I already traced it out right there. So I'm going to make this gasket. Um, then we're going to put some um, Permatex on the back end of it, uh, glue this to the engine block, oil the front of this, put this on, and I'm going to put a backer bolt 
right through the back of this. I'm going to make sure whatever length I use is just only as long as it needs to be. Then I'll put it back and put it on here. So I'll show it to you when it's all done. Um, it would have been very easy to break this ear off. But then, I don't know, depending how much material you have left, I guess you can kind of put a washer on it and fudge it. But chances are you're going to have a leak. I think doing it the way I did it gives me the best chance of success once again before you put any drill to this or anything make sure you you flatten it out center punch it and very carefully right I had this propped in a piece of wood but very carefully make it so that you drill you really try to drill through the center of the bolt I also don't know exactly what went wrong though this thing held on right into the end I mean you could see there was virtually nothing left before it would come free so I guess I'm also going to chase these threads out I'll run a tap through them just to clean them up too maybe uh maybe put just a well problem with any seas if it keeps getting loose they're going to keep tightening the hell out of it and before you know it they're going to kill it that way too I guess I'll just run a tap through it and then perhaps uh hit it with a little WD-40 which will keep things loose Okay, I'm chasing it out. This is an M6 1.0. Remember, this is a Yamaha, right? Made in Japan. Metric bolts. So, this one's all chased out, ready to go. Let's work on the other one. I put the carburetor flange back on. And you guys could see I'm using 5mm Allen's M6 1.0 um, pitch. Anyway, so they both tightened up. They're not slipping, but I think I'm just going to go with a slightly longer bolt and back this up with a um, with a nut on the back side of it. But it, it looks good. It looks like it's going to work out. I'm just going to smash that. Um, I would put a paper gasket here if I were he also. Anyway, as a matter of fact, probably I'll cut one out and glue it on there for him. So he just has to put the carb on. Anyhow, so I'm going to put a little longer bolt on it. I'll show you when it's all done. Okay, I'm putting it together. You guys can see I oiled that side. There's the Permatex stuff on the gasket on the other side. So just have to put this right on, bolt it right down. Here we have it, the repair is done, right? I put a bolt in there, and the bolt actually snugged up pretty good. I didn't lean on it hard, but it snugged up without spinning. I backed it up with a uh, nut on the back of it, so that's not going anywhere. Um, put that one in. We have paper gaskets on both sides. All he needs to do is put it back on the golf cart smash the carburetor on and he's good hopefully it lasts another whole bunch of time um broken bolt repair removal and repair um honestly guys it's a little bit of an art form right some some folks show you how to do it and you know everything's even right they're working on a nice flat surface that could go under a drill press those those jobs are easy unfortunately a lot of times those jobs are not reality um, in this case once again I was able to get all this kind of stuff off I was able to put the carbide um, cone bit on there and the carbide um, I don't know <laughs> pair the little one on the uh, Dremel extension and kind of work my way through through the bolt um, but even with that I gotta tell you it really it really did fight me almost the whole way um, but we have success now remember silly little things like uh, tape up the surfaces that you don't want scarred you know all you have to do is slip with the Dremel tool and you put a line across them right that kind of ruins things um, you know slow you got to go slow, right? If you're, if you feel yourself, oh man, I'm really making progress, and you lean on a little harder, once again, you could break the ear right off, and you don't want to do that. Anyway, anybody who gets themselves a broken bolt, good luck to you. Um, 
this one was seized in there pretty good. Once again, I more or less had to remove it all before I could get it out. Um, and the way it was already pre-drilled and all, they're, they're really, I, I kind of attempted to slot it a little bit and turn it out. I attempted to grab it on the back and turn it out. There, It wasn't having any of that. So I think I'm going with 100% success here. Pretty, not 100% pretty, but 100% success. Let's go with it that way. Anyway, I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember, feet down, heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.